Let's solve leak code 1466 reorder routes to make all paths lead to the city zero. So this is obviously a graph problem. We're given n nodes or cities numbered from zero to n minus one, and we're given n minus one roads, which are the edges in this case. So the first thing to do is understand what the problem is telling us. So the problem tells us that there's only one way to travel between two cities. So basically what that means is that there's no loop inside of the graph. So for example, if I had three nodes, one, two, three, I had one edge going this way, where can I put the second edge? Because we have three nodes, so we have to have two edges. Can I put the edge over here? No, because that violates the condition. Can I put the edge over here? No, because then that's a duplicate edge. So I have to put the edge over here or put the edge over here. So the two things that this tells us about the graph is that there's no loops first of all, right? So there's no loops in this graph. It also tells us that the graph is connected because we have n minus one edges. And if we can't put them, and if we can't create a loop with the edges, then that means we have to connect all of the nodes together. Once you can recognize this, the problem becomes a lot easier. So the next thing you wanna do is draw a picture because that makes it a lot easier for you to visualize it. I've already done that over here, so let's start looking at the problem. So we want every node to be able to reach zero. So the first logical thing to do is look at zero, right? Oh, and just look at its neighbors, right? Just let's first see if its neighbors can at least reach zero. Let's first look at four. Four can obviously reach zero. We have a direct edge going from four to zero, so we don't have to do anything there. But what about one? There's only one edge between them, and that edge is going from zero to one. So we have to we have to change this node, right? We have to go back to zero from one. So now we at least know that all of the neighbors of zero can reach zero, right? So we've checked one and we've checked four. But what about all of the neighbors of four, for example, right? Can all of four's neighbors reach four? Because if we know all of four's neighbors can reach four, then all of those neighbors can reach zero because we know four can reach zero. So let's check if four's neighbors can reach it. It only has one neighbor, five, and five can't reach four. So we also have to change this edge. Now we know that five can reach four and four can reach zero, so these nodes can reach zero. What about five's neighbors? Well, it doesn't have any. So let, now let's go back to one. We know one can reach zero, but can one's neighbors reach zero? It has one neighbor, three, and it looks like the edge is going from one to three, so we have to change this edge as well. So now we know that one can reach zero and three can reach one, so therefore three can also reach zero. But what about three's neighbors? Can they reach three? Three only has one neighbor, two, and two can reach three, so we don't have to change any edges. But what about all of two's neighbors? Two doesn't have any neighbors, so we, we don't have any more nodes to visit. Now we've determined that every node can reach zero. We did this sort of recursively or propagating changes, right? First, we wanted to check, starting at zero, can zero's neighbors reach zero, okay? If zero's neighbors can reach it, can their neighbors reach it? That next layer we're checking, right? We're checking three and five. And then if those nodes can also reach zero, can their neighbors reach zero? We check the next layer and there's only one node there, only two, right? So it's kind of like a breadth first search. We're just propagating outward to, see, to change all outgoing edges, right? We want every edge to be pointing back in the direction of zero. With this traversal, we only have to visit each node once so we can say that the time complexity of this is big O of n. So now let's get to the code. Before I start, I like to write some comments just to remind myself what to do. So remember, we're going to start at city zero and we're going to recursively check its neighbors. And we're going to check that the edges are, if the edges are outgoing, we're going to count them. We don't actually have to change them in this problem. That's not a requirement. We just have to check uh, the number of outgoing edges that exist. So this problem gives us a list of connections, but we want to instantly be able to check if node A 
or city A can reach city B instantly, right? So let's make a set to do that instead of uh, uh, an array, right? I'm going to use uh, set comprehension in Python to do that. So I'm basically getting each connection, adding it to a hash set. Next, we want to know each node's neighbors, not if we can reach that node itself. We want to know any adjacent neighbors of a node. So we're going to use a hash map for that. Again, we're going to use uh, comprehension to do that. So a dictionary comprehension. For each city, we're going to have an empty list initially. We also only want to visit each node once so that we have the most optimal solution. So we're going to use a hash set to keep track of visited nodes. Also, we just want to count the number of edges that we have to change, so we'll just use an integer to do that. Next, we're going to fill up our neighbor's hash map. So in this case, the neighbors of A includes city B, and the neighbors of city B include city A. Now we want to write our function to actually traverse the graph. You can do this a bunch of ways, iteratively, recursively, depth first search, breadth first search, but I'm going to do this depth first search recursively. To make it most convenient, I'm going to use non-local uh, variables so I don't have to pass them into every function call. So for each city, we want to iterate through each of its neighbors, right? So we can do that pretty easily. If the neighbor itself has already been visited, we don't want to traverse it again, so we'll just continue to the next iteration, to the next neighbor. So next we want to check if this neighbor can reach city 0. So the way we can check if this neighbor can reach city zero is simply by checking if the tuple neighbor city exists in our set edges. If it exists, that means neighbor can directly reach the city that we're currently at. If it's not in this set, that means that the edge is outward, so we have to change this edge, so we have to increment our count. Once we visit a neighbor, of course, we have to mark that it's been visited so we don't visit it again. Lastly, we have to recursively run depth first search on this node. Because we know that this neighbor can now reach city zero, but we want to check that this neighbor's neighbors can also reach city zero. We're basically propagating the changes. Lastly, we want to actually run our depth first search function on city zero, of course, because that's our starting point. But we also have to remember that we have to add this city as well to our set to mark that it's been visited. Lastly, all we have to do is return the total number of changes that we made. We don't actually have to make the changes themselves. Oops, I had a couple typos. I used the plural of neighbors instead of neighbor. You want to make sure that you don't have typos like me. And now let's resubmit it and make sure it works this time. Yep, beautifully. So these are the steps you can take. Our time complexity was big O of n. Because we're visiting each node at most once. Our memory complexity was also big O of n because we have a bunch of data structures we're using, edges, neighbors, uh, visit. But we're only going to have each node or each edge 
in these data structures at most once. So it's going to be proportional to n. 